Hi guys, so in this video I'm going to show how I made a small sewers diorama using one of these Army Painter Game Master little sets. Um, pretty awesome, they come with lots of little sort of paints and grass and dirt and just basically bits and pieces that sort of help enhance making a, um, a little sort of diorama basically. And this one is the Ruins and Cliffs Terrain Kit which um, yeah should be ideal for doing like a dungeon-y sort of set. Um, yeah, coming in little booklets, obviously pretty cool, some ideas and tips and tricks in there. As well as, obviously, uh, this is one I really like, it's the primer. But this one's especially for XPS foam. Because uh, some primers, if you use them on the foam, it'll actually sort of eat in and dissolve it. Which, obviously, you don't really want. So, yeah, this one's pretty good, because it can be used on foam. Just to sort of seal it, ready for painting. So, yeah, bits and pieces, obviously a nice big bubble to pop there. Um, but, yeah, bits of, like, sandstone, obviously the sort of paints you're going to need for this. And yeah, just a few bits and pieces which make make it really easy. So obviously I'll be using these throughout this um, this little build. Uh, but obviously starting off with the uh, the foam. And yeah, the good old rollers. I'll leave a link in the description, guys, for the rollers that I've got. Because um, I think I've got about eight or so. And they're all pretty good. Um, yeah, you just sort of like roll it out onto the foam. Leave the indentation. And you get a variety of sort of textures from sort of walls um, and flooring. Which is uh, pretty cool. So yeah. So that's going to be the, uh, the back wall. Uh, I'm using good old Gorilla Glue. I'm using that to stick things down. It's an awesome glue. Uh, it does take a while for it to dry. But that is quite good because it means you can sort of place things. And then if you're not happy with how you placed it, you do still have a bit of time to move it. Which is handy because that's exactly what happened here. Um, I was going to put like two bits of this on here and then cut some off. Just to make sort of like the, uh, the areas where the, uh, the sewage is going to be. But then I thought, well I may as well just sort of not cut bits off and just sort of position this so I've got the, the gaps that I need. It is a little figure just so I can sort of work on the size that I'm making things which is pretty cool. Plus with this this uh, little diorama, because I'm not going to use this in any sort of um, campaigns for D&D, &D, um, I'm going to make it sort of so it looks like it's got a bit of depth to it which is why I'm obviously going to have the front sort of stones bigger than the, uh, the back stones. Um, just so basically I want this little set so I can take pictures or photos of some of the um, the creatures and heroes that I sort of paint. And yes, yeah, so that's why I thought this, this doesn't have to be accurate or good enough to sort of move figures around in when I'm playing a game. It purely is just a backdrop to um, yeah take some shots, which is pretty cool. So obviously a lot of what I'm doing in the video is kind of like self-explanatory, as in obviously you can see what I'm doing. Um, but I know you guys like me talking over the videos, so I'm going to keep talking over the videos. Even though sometimes it is going to be a whole load of waffle. <laughs> Just because you guys seem to like it, which is kind of bizarre, but hey-ho. Um, so yeah, as you can see, I'm marking out basically where the squares are going to be. Um, or the tiled floors, I should say. So with these, I um, score them first with my, my blade first. Because um, then what I do is I go over it with a, a pen. Just to make the um, sort of make it indentations a bit more, but I did find when I did the um, did this with a pen first time, the pen just basically sort of ripped these um, the foam rather than sort of like cut through it nicely. So yeah, I always sort of score it with the uh, the blade first and then go over it with the pen um, because obviously this makes a nice sort of deeper and wider sort of uh, groove um, just to make the the tiles look a bit more sort of obviously like single tiles as opposed to one piece of board that's cut up, which obviously is what it is. So yeah, again, I, I like making these little dioramas. Uh, they are pretty cool. I can make quite a few of these. So again, guys, I always ask, if you've got any ideas of what kind of little diorama you want to make, me to make, by all means leave it in the description, because um, I do want to make a whole variety of, basically, different little backdrops. Again, I want to make some just purely so I can take photos of my uh, my little um, little miniatures, as opposed to actually using them in any sort of game. So as you saw there, just basically texturing the tiles at the bottom, just to make them look a little bit more uneven and sort of aged. And then good old grout, I say, yeah, I love this stuff. I use grout in most of my builds. Um, I, like, I like using it to sort of fill in any gaps like this, um, just so there isn't sort of a, a noticeable gap between the, uh, the wall and the floor. And in this case, I wanted these um, edge tiles to be almost like curved, rather than sort of like to straight edged. I want them to be sort of like curved as they go into the water. So yeah, a bit of grout and then finger it and um, gets the job done. <laughs> and then using another tool just to sort of like make the um, the tiles look like they are tiles that are curved, basically. So yeah, absolutely loving this. It's a nice little simple diorama, uh, but I am really pleased with the end effect because obviously you would have seen an image of that on the uh, the thumbnail. 
Uh, but yeah, really pleased about this came out, and yeah, I think it looks pretty cool. So originally, I did look at the uh, the sort of sewer pipes um, to sort of 3D print them, as obviously I've got a couple of 3D printers, and well, I love 3D printing stuff. But then I thought, well, no, that's um, obviously it's not it's not exactly cheating, but obviously not everyone has 3D printers. So I thought I'd have a go at sort of scratch building little sewer sort of pipes. Um, I'm going to say scratch, but there's obviously not a lot to these really, just a bit of a circle, uh, um, sort of bit, of bit of cardboard there, a couple of matchsticks, and I stuck some little ball bearings at the top, just to make, well, kind of like rivets. Because um, unfortunately I haven't got any sort of like half-shaped balls, uh, well, well might have, uh, so I might have to sort of look into getting some of them, because that would have been quite handy to have had, just to make the rivets. And then, yeah, obviously you need to be able to get down into the sewers, and I thought rather than doing sort of like a conventional stairs or spiral staircase, I would have kind of like rungs. Um, so yeah, nice and simple, made some wire, uh, bend them round, and then sort of like push them in. Um, I pushed them in first, just so I'd get them all nice and neat, but then I'd actually take them out and then glue them into place. Um, just because obviously I don't want anything falling out once it's all sort of made together. So obviously I couldn't resist though, I had to do a bit of 3D printing. <laughs> So these pillars were printed on my Anycubic Photon M3. Great printer, I'll leave again the description, uh, well not description, but a link to where you can buy one of those printers. Um, they are nice and cheap, the, uh, the Anycubic M3 ones, and yeah, great little job. Um, so you did well here. So yeah, good old Gorilla Glue, again, position these where I need them, walk away, leave it for, it's about two hours, two, three hours, and then this glue is like super glue. It's, uh, it's really good, so that's pretty awesome. Um, so yeah, so this sewer, obviously, these are meant to be where obviously the uh, the poop ends up, I guess. So I'm going to use some sort of stones just to put the uh, the bottom of this, just to give it a bit of texture. Uh, whether this is meant to be poop or just sort of dirt and gravel, who knows? Um, but it does sort of help for the effect, and uh, yeah, it gives a good result. Obviously, it gets a bit messy, but uh, yeah, so one thing I did notice, I accidentally got a bit of glue on the polystyrene, and obviously the super glue just basically eats into it. Um, but in this case, it was one of those happy accidents, uh, good old Bob Ross, and yeah, I thought I'd put some <laughs> more glue, but this time on purpose in areas, just to make it look like the, um, the stones had sort of like weathered, chipped, and basically rumbled away. So yes, yeah, so the good old primer, and there we go, it's, um, it's nice and sealed, basically, which is cool. So if you use any normal primer on the, uh, on the foam, it will sort of eat it, uh, which obviously isn't very good. So I've also got another primer from um, Army Painters or Game Master set, and that was a green. So I, I did a little sort of light sort of going over with that, just to sort of give it a bit of greenness. Again, it makes it look a bit more mouldy and just sort of, uh, well, sewery, I guess. But um, yeah, no, I'm pleased with how it looks. Obviously, it's just a case of now going over, painting a few bits, obviously silver. Um, I will be doing some sort of dry brushing and obviously good old washes everywhere because I love washes, <laughs> can't get enough of them. So yeah, I, I, I do, I probably go a bit over the top sometimes with the um, the washes, but I just love the effect they give. Especially when you want something to look really sort of grimy and dirty and, and all the rest of it, it uh, yeah, it works really well. So as you see, I'm using a couple, couple of different sort of browns just to add a bit of um, contrast and whatever to the, um, well, I say it could be poop, it could just be gravel, stones at the bottom, either way. I think it looks good, and yeah, another another sort of wash. This time it's a, a brown wash because obviously poop's normally brown. Um, and yeah, I love it. <laughs> so sometimes, guys, I'm not too sure what to say about this because obviously it is so self-explanatory what I'm doing. Um, but yeah, you guys for some reason like to hear me just waffling on. <laughs> I don't know if it's because you're like punishing me or what. Um, but there we go. So yeah, I'm gonna waffle. And I'm just going to try and uh, try and explain, obviously, what I'm doing on the screen, which you can clearly see. So yeah, I think I must admit though, um, dry brushing and washes, I, I absolutely love. So yeah, my painting sort of technique, skills, whatever you want to call it, fairly simple. Just get the block colours on, then do a wash, um, and then do some dry brushing. And that seems to well for me, it gives me great pleasure, and I enjoy how it looks. And yeah, I'm I'm certainly happy with the uh, the end end kind of result, which is uh, pretty cool. So again, you might have seen one of my previous videos, when I put these little lights on, I tried to do like a, a brighter area um, around the, um, the the torches, just to make it look as though, well, the torches are cast in a lighter area. Uh, on my last one, it didn't really come out that well, um, but I think it looked better than not doing it. So yeah, 
I thought I'd have another go. Well, I still can't find the original video that I saw where someone did that and they made a really good job of it. But I need to have another look. So I absolutely am going to pour some resin in this and I must admit if you've seen any of my other previous resin videos I don't really have a lot of success with the resin so that's why I've gone over and with PVA glue I've basically just coated this just to make sure, I mean it should be sealed from the, um, the primer that I used but because I never have much success with the resin I just wanted to put some uh, PVA sort of on this just to sort of make sure that when I do pour the, pour the resin on the resin just doesn't eat into the um, the XPS foam. <laughs> but the problem is I've got is well the resin I've got, um, say in the UK, it's difficult to get sort of resin that you can pour deep. So the resin I've got, whenever you make it and it's like too well too deep, it heats up something wrong, and then just basically melts whatever it touches. But obviously in this case, I'm not using much resin, so I shouldn't have any issues with it heating up and sort of <laughs> dissolving everything around it. Um, yeah, so but as you will see, obviously this one didn't eat into uh, the XPS foam um, and wasn't too bad. Um, yeah, and no, I was quite pleased that this one came out actually, which is good because I've got loads of resin. Um, and I, I do want to use it more, it's just that fear of whenever I do use it, I've kind of almost ruined everything. So I had a bit of a spillage on this one. I noticed about after 15 minutes when I went and checked on it, um, there was a bit of a gap and resin was coming out which is why I then put the, uh, the little lolly stick on there uh, but it also meant some of the resin actually sort of seeped out underneath this, uh, this little diorama which wasn't too bad, I say as, as resin failures go this was a very minor one because uh, previously the resins, I say, has eaten whatever I've made and just totally destroyed all the hours of work that I put into the build um, which is why I really only wanted to do a very shallow fill of resin here <laughs> Just because I, I still don't seem to have much luck with it. Whereas this resin I love. Uh, this resin obviously in the tube and then a good old UV light. Um, yeah, never any issues of anything going wrong here. And I do love using this one. So just to make obviously the um, look like there is some sort of liquid and water coming from the uh, from the sewer pipes there. Um, but then I kind of thought, well, it didn't look as brown as I wanted it to. Because again, I didn't want to put too much brown in the resin just in case I ruined it. Because obviously if you put too much in, you can't take it out so I only put a little bit in uh, but it still looked too clear so that's why I'm now painting over it with the army painter speed paint um, just obviously the speed paints are nice and sort of like clear and sort of thin and yeah please how that came out um, obviously you can still see the resin and the thing underneath and yeah worked really well and then last little thing just to make it again look like it is sort of uh, in derelict and yeah it's not very nice down the sewers I'm putting some little tufts of grass and I've got this little bag that's got um, well little bits of grass in so these all came with the Game Master sort of um, terrain kit which is pretty awesome um, so I'll leave some links down below to the sort of stuff that I've used and then yeah a bit of uh, PVA glue in the in the gaps and cracks and all that and then just sort of putting the, uh, the fake grass over the top and then I let it all dry and then basically shook off uh, the remainder of the grass and yeah that's it pretty pleased with how this has all come out and here's some glamour shots. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, I just want to say a quick shout out and thank you to all my patrons as well as the sponsors for helping making it possible for me to sort of keep making these videos and obviously buying the materials I need to build stuff. So yeah guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Leave comments down below, hit the like button, all that good stuff and I'll see you in the next one. Okay, take care. Bye for now.